Okay, let's continue our discussion of differential cross sections or cross sections in general. Okay. Fine. So let's recall what we wrote down for the cross section. It was this expression here. I'm just um, rewriting it. It will be useful. So d sigma, okay, is one over four. I hope you have already done this exercise. I gave it last time. Minus. To square. So we have some scattering happening, and these are the incoming particles of momentum k1 and k2. Okay, this this beam had momentum. Um, I think I called it k1. So I should label it like this. Okay. So then you have all these uh, differential elements okay. these correspond to the uh, final state particles Okay, then you have matrix element squared. I will suppress the the arguments, and then you have. I should also. This k one plus k two minus summation over p i. Okay, this delta function also times matrix element square. Okay, and right now uh, all the differential elements p1, p2, pn, they are in different regions. They do not overlap. Okay. So one thing I forgot to tell you last time, I realized later that I didn't mention. So here. Yeah, here uh, till this stage we had this uh, probability given by this expression where we had f1 tilde and f2 tilde still uh, present here, and after that I um, uh, used the normalization of f1 tilde and f2 tilde which I had shown you earlier, and I was assuming that I mean I was working in the limit in which these um, folding functions or smearing functions are sharply peaked around values k1 and k2 okay so that only those values are picked up by these these factors okay and this is uh, uh, no problem because even though the width of these gaussians which we are taking as uh, smearing functions they are finite they are not zero something small okay but uh, that doesn't cause any trouble because if you look at detectors, okay, when they detect, they detect a particle hits somewhere and they can detect the momentum, but they detect the momentum with some finite resolution. Okay, they cannot distinguish between a, a particle which is having a momentum sharply uh, peaked at. k1 or if it has a small spread around k1 okay so when you prepare these states you uh, our measurements are not uh, of that quality that they can really resolve the difference between a very sharp peak and a slightly broad peak okay so we are not making any error in in that sense okay so these are all 
consistent with the uh, measurement requirements that we have. Okay, so I can I can uh, replace these by their just um, normalizations, and I'm assuming that I have a very sharply peaked um, Gaussian. Okay. Also, um, some names I want to tell. So, look at this factor. This factor has come from here, um, this line, this line here. And of course, this is not a Lorentz invariant uh, quantity, but what you see in this line. It is boost invariant uh, along that direction. If you do boost only along that direction, then it doesn't change. And I can uh, so this update you should not think that this is Lorentz invariant, even though the way it is written, it is Lorentz invariant. But then we should uh, understand that this line is equal to this factor only when k1 and k2 are. Uh, parallel to each other okay they are collinear momenta not otherwise okay otherwise this is otherwise this is not equal to that okay so it is equal only if on, only in that limit this collinear limit where these k1 and k2 are um, in along the z axis okay then so that uh, that's uh, invariant under boost along z but other than that, all other factors are invariant, Lorentz invariant. Okay, so if you look at this, this kind of things we have seen in the first course also. Okay, this is just uh, invariant measure. Similarly, these are all invariant. This is anyway delta four, so that's invariant. That matrix element squared is also invariant. Okay, so other than this factor, everything else is Lorentz invariant, and this is this piece is invariant under boost along the z axis okay another thing that if these regions r1 r2 r and they overlap okay and because we are going we, we will in this um, in this theory we have bosons identical bosons okay so the same state gets i mean counted twice Right, because if you have um, two particles in a given region and the regions overlap, I mean, two uh, two particles in a given region, then saying that this one has momentum p1 and that one has momentum p2, or vice versa, it's the these are not two different states. This is the same state, right? You can these these particles are indistinguishable, but the way this has been set up, okay, it is counting as if these particles are distinguishable you are tracking the momenta of each of these particles so i will be then over counting the number of uh, such states and i should divide by one over n, one factorial n factorial if you have n particles in the final state okay so divide by n factorial if the regions overlap if all of these r's are same identical okay and then that factor you can include together with mod m square so you can write 1 over n factorial mod m square that will be the case when you have identical particles Okay, um, some names. This factor is called flux factor. This this first pre factor is called flux factor. That's just a name. It's useful to have names so that you can refer to these objects easily. Okay, that's flux factor and you get total cross section sigma 
if you integrate over the entire phase space and this thing is called phase space. Okay, if I integrate over uh, this integral dp1, integral dpn okay, with these objects together with the delta function that is called phase space. I will write down in a moment. If we integrate over the over the entire phase space, and what's phase space is integral d cube p i over two pi cube. 1 over 2 omega p i product over all i. So, this entire factor times 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 ok this entire thing is called phase space ok or phase space integral um, phase space. So, because it is Lorentz invariant it is also called Lorentz invariant phase space lips. Okay, and the differential elements are sometimes called d lips. Okay, good. Then uh, let's look at some examples. So first, let's one body look at a fu uh, first a process which has one body final state. Okay, this will be useful when you are studying deep inelastic scattering and we will not do that in this course, but um, at least I can talk about phase space here. So, here is the thing. So, you have a particle with momentum k1, another particle with momentum k2 and as far as I am concerned right now, uh, it does not matter whether uh, what is the nature of these particles? Okay, uh, because I am looking only at the kinematics, the phase space part. Okay, I am not looking at the dynamics. Dynamics is contained in mod m square. That guy knows about which particle is interacting with with which kind of particle and what are the interaction forces. But phase space doesn't know about those things. So suppose we look at one body final state. And then I want to uh, write down the expression of cross section. Of course, I will write it in terms of mod m square. Mod m square I will not uh, specify because that requires looking at a particular process, but I will do the kinematic part. And I will also allow for these masses to be different. So, let us say this particle has mass m1, the momentum k2 is carried by a particle of mass m2, and this p is carried by. A particle of mass m. So, what is cross section? Cross section is flux factor times integral over the phase space times matrix element square. Okay. So, let us do the um, phase space first. Okay, uh, phase space. Let's write it as d pi one. That's just the notation for this thing. One stands for one body final state. Okay, so this is integral d pi one. That's what the notation is. So d pi one is equal to what is that d cube p there is only one particle in the final state 2 pi cube ok 1 over 2 omega p where omega p is the energy of this particle p or carrying momentum p and then you have this delta function ok I will encourage you to do this calculation before watching the video and hopefully you will succeed on your own but in case you have difficulty then you can refer to this video okay but try it on your own first 
Okay, so this is a Lorentz invariant object and we have seen earlier that we can write this as d4 p over 2 pi to the 4 then delta plus and the plus means that the energy component is positive delta plus of um, p square minus m square okay and there is a factor of 2 pi that I am missing 2 pi times delta plus of something has happened again now all the factors are fine I am still missing this 2 pi to the 4 I think I know what, what is happening. P. Okay. Now, because we have this K1 and K2 um, as these incoming particles with real energy, so they are positive automatically. So, I do not have to write it as an additional constraint. Okay, because K1 sorry k1 plus k2 the energy components of energy component of this is the energy component of p p0 okay and because k10 plus k20 is positive p0 is positive okay so it is ensured by this so i don't need to carry a plus with me i can drop it it is automatically ensured from here okay and then i can do the uh, this integral d4p Okay, by cube, sorry. So, what will that give? It gives somehow factor of 2 pi 4. Sorry, that is the mistake. That is why my factors were not matching. 2 pi 4. So, this 2 pi to the 4 cancels 2 pi to the 4, and only this 2 pi is left. So, 2 pi. Okay. In doing the integral, we will take away this delta function and, and replace p by k1 plus k2. So, I get k1 plus k2 whole square minus m square. Okay. that is fine that is good so sigma cross section is now pi over 2 1 over k1 dot k2 whole square minus m1 square m2 square times this delta of k1 plus k2 whole square minus m square times matrix element square ok so this will be the expression and you can now for whatever process you are you want to get this cross section you can supply the mod m square for that process and this will this uh, line will provide you the result for that ok so next we will take a two body final state ok so let us look at two body final state So, what is the phase space that is 
I'm going to denote by d pi 2, 2 refers to the two body final state. Okay, and the phase space is integral d cube p1 over 2 pi cube 1 over 2 omega. Um, I want to write p1. p1. So the energy omega p1 is the energy of particle carrying momentum p1 then integral d cube p2 over 2 pi cube 1 over 2 omega p2 and then our energy, energy momentum conserving delta function k1 plus k2 minus p1 minus p2 ok. Now this object is Lorentz invariant as I have said earlier also. So let us go and evaluate this in the center of mass frame of P, uh, K1 and K2. So let us evaluate it in K1 plus K2 rest frame. <coughs> okay, so K1 is equal to minus K2. So the moment of incoming particles are back to back and equal. So if we are in that frame and the center of mass energy would be omega k1 plus omega k2 okay, which I will call omega cm. Okay. Now if I look at this delta function in the center of mass frame then I can write it as see these are four delta functions I will write energy uh, de delta function corresponding to energy and the momenta separately so you will have delta of omega cm so k10 plus k20 is what is omega k1 plus omega k2 and because I am in center of mass frame this is equal to omega cm should be equal to omega p1 plus omega p2 right this is what I should get and then the delta function delta cube of now because of my choice k1 plus k2 is equal to 0 so sum of these three momenta is equal to 0 and then I am left with only p1 plus p2. Okay. What does this delta function says? Say this function, uh, this delta function says that it hits only when p1, p2 is equal to minus p1. Okay, meaning the momentum uh, of the final state particles are back to back. Okay, it doesn't tell you the direction, but it tells you that they are back to back, which is what you expect. Okay, so momentum conserving delta function is uh, giving you the the correct correct result ok now as I have said repeatedly the moment you have delta functions it is easy to integrate so let us integrate over d cube p2 ok and use up this delta function and doing so we will in doing so we will put p2 equal to minus p1 wherever p2 appears okay which is this place 1 over 2 omega p2 and also this delta function so these three delta functions will be used up one delta function will be left and all p2s will get replaced by p1 so what do you get is the following Okay. Um, so two pi cube will kill this two pi. Uh, will leave only one factor of two pi from here, and you'll have one over two omega p two. But now here in this p two, you should use p two equal to minus p one. Okay, that's what you should do. But I will still continue writing P2, it is easier to write that way. But we understand that this condition has to be supplied that P1 plus P2 equal to 0. Okay. 
then you have factor of 2 pi and then a delta of omega c m minus omega p 1 minus omega p 2 and here also in this so what is omega p 2 now omega p 2 was p 2 square plus m 2 square but now that is because of this delta function p 1 square plus m 2 square ok because I put p 2 equal to minus p 1 so that is omega p 2. Okay, good, that is fine. Now, omega p1 and omega p2, they all contain p1 square, right. Now, you, we still have an integral left over p1, but they all have the magnitude, the square of the magnitude of vector p1, right, because p1 appears here and appears in this exactly in this way p1 square plus m1 square square root it appears here again you have p1 square appearing here and these two places also ok. So, I can do the um, do this integral if I were to separate if I separate this into angular and radial parts ok and then I can use uh, one of these delta one, this delta function which is only one and do the integral. So, that is what I am going to do now. So, d cube p 1 I will write as um, d p 1 d p 1 that is the magnitude of p 1 then p 1 square okay, magnitude, magnitude of p 1 square and then you have also the solid angle ok. So, this is what you have this is the uh, uh, solid angle um, volume element coming from the solid angle and this is the radial part ok. Now, I will do this um, do these integrals or probably not yet. Yeah. So, I can write yeah, let us write once this expression it will be useful. So, I am writing d sigma over d omega ok. So, I am taking this volume element to the left side of this expression right. So, d sigma I have calculated d q p 1 d q p 2 that thing ok and I am I have mod m square and the final integral with d q p 1 I have a d omega that d omega I am taking, taking to the left. So, I get d sigma over d omega ok and this is equal to 1 over 4 k 1 dot k 2 whole square minus m 1 square m 2 square that is the flux factor times integral um, d p 1 over 2 pi cube then you have p 1 mod square then 1 over 2 omega p 1 omega p 2, but remember p 2 vector is equal to minus p 1 vector that is what I should use 2 pi times delta of omega center of mass minus omega p 1 minus omega p 2 times mod m square ok. So, this mod m square has to be integrated over p 1. Okay, so, now we have to do the integral and for that I will 
utilize this delta function I should find out um, I should find out the measure it provides so that's easy so you take delta of omega center of mass minus omega p1 minus omega p2 okay and take this argument and define it to be f of p1 what is f of p1 it is this thing omega cm minus omega p1 minus omega p2 okay now i should find out the derivative of f with respect to the magnitude of p1 what will that give this gives a constant okay and actually a modulus of this i will need 1 over modulus of this so modulus of this is this gives zero this will give you maybe i'll just write down the final answer because it's very easy you will get um, p1 over omega p1 omega p2 times omega cm okay you can do this uh, differentiation it's not difficult okay so what do you get let's check let me write now so this is 1 over 4 times whatever that is in the square root times so this this factor i have to divide in the denominator so that will give you omega p1 omega p2 okay over omega cm okay that comes from here and then you also have magnitude of p1 okay. so 1 over this thing fine then when i do the integral over uh, p1 that delta function gets used up okay and yeah here 1 over 2 pi cube okay where i should use omega p1 plus omega p2 is equal to the center of mass and center of mass energy okay so there is a factor of 4 coming from here hmm. and mod m square let me check if i missed something all looks good so i'll write it down 4 times that square root times 1 over 4 into 2 pi square into this 1 over omega cm and then this p1 gets cancelled with this p1 square so i have only p1 modulus square and then i have matrix element square Okay, did I miss something? No. Everything is here. Okay, so now let's look at the flux factor. So this involves k1 dot k2 whole square. So I'll let me first calculate that. So for that I will calculate k1 plus k2 square and this is k1 square plus k2 square plus 2 k1 dot k2 okay where when I write k1 square this is k mu k mu okay so k1 square is just m1 square k2 square is m2 square 
plus 2 k1 dot k2 okay and um, we are in the center of mass uh, we are in the frame k1 plus k2 equal to 0 so this thing the special components of this sum is 0 and only temporal components are there so that is what I am going to use now and this is just um, omega center of mass squared okay so what is k1 dot k2 is yeah k1 dot k2 is 1 over 2 omega cm square um, yeah, actually I what I wanted to do was I want to take the case where m1 is equal to m2 is equal to uh, also mp1 equal to mp2 meaning all the finals all the particles have the same mass okay, so I am looking at that uh, case now so this becomes plus m square okay because this gives you 2m square and when you divide by 2 it gives you m square okay so with that k1 dot k2 whole square minus m1 square m2 square which becomes m to the 4 that square root we need to calculate and this object is equal to I will just substitute here um, I will just skip some trivial steps you can check that it should come out to be omega cm square omega cm square over 4 minus m square okay, that is what we should get and then you can use that um, omega cm minus m square okay, this you can check now omega cm square that is the center of mass energy square will be equal to the uh, half of the energy of one of these particles right because all particles I mean the incoming ones they have equal energies they have equal masses equal momenta so equal energies and similarly for the ones going out they have equal momenta of, I mean the magnitude of the momenta is same but they are also carrying equal masses so the energies are also equal so it is twice the energy of P1 okay so what I am saying is your final state particles are going back to back because you are in the center of mass frame the momentum of this guy is equal to the momentum of this guy okay and because the masses are equal the energies are also equal okay because e square minus p square is m square so because m's are equal e's have to be equal or omegas have to be equal okay so this is 4 omega p1 square so it becomes omega center of mass square omega p1 square minus m square and what is this e square minus p square that's m uh, e, e square minus m square that's p square and what is p that's this okay so when i look at the flux factor flux factor for this case where all the particles have equal mass is the square root of this which is omega cm times modulus of p1 okay now i can substitute this in this expression okay for 1 over uh, 4 times the square root and what is that omega cm times p1 what happened yeah. 
omega cm times p1 so that will make it omega cm square below and one factor of p1 will uh, get cancelled so what do you get you get d sigma over d omega is equal to let me write it here let, let's write here this is equal to this factor i said it's omega cm p1 times 6 4 and there's some yeah there's this 4 also 1 over 4 okay so this 4 times 4 16 times 4 64 so 1 over 64 pi square okay this omega cm makes it omega cm square this p1 will cancel so i will just cancel this one and write p1 and then mod m square somehow i should have gotten a mod i have an extra p1 how come So this should have been um, p1 not p1 square correct because I forgot to take into account this piece so this in cancel this one so that we have only p1 and this p1 which I had will cancel this p1 okay so you get 1 over 64 pi square 1 over omega center of mass square times mod m square that's d sigma over d omega okay for a two body uh, final state when you are looking at looking it in the center of mass frame okay because we made this um, specialization to this frame okay so something okay now i know something went wrong no nothing went wrong so let me write down the final result again for 2 to 2 scattering cross section uh, with all mass is equal to equal the differential cross section okay d sigma over d omega in the center of mass frame is 1 over 64 pi square center of mass energy i'll just write ecm instead of omega it's uh, easier to remember times matrix element square And note that this one is not proportional to some delta function as uh, we had for the um, some things are not 
Okay, it's not behaving very properly. So for the case of one body, we had gotten a delta function. Let's check one body. We, it was the cross section was proportional to a delta function, which was ensuring that um, k1 plus k2 squared is equal to m square. Okay, but here you don't have a delta function left. But that's a useful formula to to remember. And we'll continue our discussion in the next video.